Whedon High School has a cell tower that's going to be right smack in the middle of the new school building. How high are the radiation levels from that cell tower? I brought a meter with me to do some measurements at the site. Now for comparison, I went to the nearby Arcola Elementary School to see what their radiation measurements were. There's no cell tower there. As you can see, the microwaves were averaging one microwatt per meter squared. Pretty low. The Wheaton High School numbers were quite a different story. I was not even able to be on campus. I was on the sidewalk near the street outside the school. But the measurements here were up to 5,000 microwatts per meter squared. So Wheaton High School has radiation numbers that are literally 1,000 to 5,000 times higher than Arcola Elementary School where there's no cell tower. Now there is a lot of controversy around the health issues from this radiation which also comes from your cell phones and laptops. But several experimental studies on radiofrequency radiation show decreased brain cells and damaged brain cells after exposures. Because of this brain damage, the chief of OBGYN at Yale and dozens of physicians started the BabySafe project recommending pregnant women reduce exposure to wireless plus sperm damage and damage to reproductive organs have been shown at levels much lower than the measurements from this cell tower. Are students and staff going to be outside on that patio near the tower? What about here on the ground? If I were a student, I'm not sure I'd want to be exposed to this. Why is MCPS allowing such towers on our schools, especially when towers are being outlawed from schools in other states and countries. Years from now, research may prove that people are sick from years under a cell tower. Are we comfortable taking this type of risk with our children and teachers? How do cell towers on school make any sense?